the studio with me again this morning, and, and maybe this uh, former American a- can answer some of the questions about Kamala Harris, is Tal Spinrad, who is in charge of Project Kalanu at United Jewish Education Board. Welcome back, Tal. Thank you, and good morning. And may, may I just add that um, that's welcome news from the French leader. I mean, mm. I, I must mm. say that one of my one of my favorite things, especially during Pesach, is I enjoy the odd macaroon. <laughs> uh, I especially like you know the coconut and chocolate ones. <laughs> it's very nice. It's nice to see we have our Pesadic macaroon in Paris helping us out. Very good. By the way, another bit of news that I neglected to read very quickly is that Israel can play Olympic soccer tournament after FIFA postponed its decision to ban Israel from the international competition, uh, which, of course, um, uh, an eloquent Australian has tried to get uh, get Israel banned. So uh, anyway, more about that later on, maybe. Well, it's, it's, nice, it's nice to know that uh, FIFA is finally using proactively procrastination. Exactly, exactly. Things. Yeah. Very good. Well put. Oh, I just you know, told that. Kind of. More online with you and your organization. You're about to take part in the ZFA's Educators Conference in August. What's that all about? Uh, well, b- before I forget, before I forget, it's on the 18th and 19th of August. Numbers just fly out of my head, you know, so <laughs> I, I knew I'd forget that by the time I stopped talking. Uh, uh, the um, Being an American, as you mentioned, I've always referred to it as the ZFA. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Education <laughs> Conference. That's okay. I was going to name my kid um, Aluminum just to scare people <laughs> in this country. Um it's it's a fabulous for people who don't know, and uh, it's actually a professional conference, which means that it's not generally open to the public. Mm-hmm. So there might be people who don't. Uh, the Zionist Federation of Australia uh, uh, every other year uh, has an educators conference, mm-hmm. and they host it this year. It's going to be at Scopus, right? And it's a wonderful opportunity for uh, – parallel opportunities for, uh, for Jewish uh, educators to network. Uh, we attract uh, people from uh, Adelaide and uh, Sydney and other – Oh, okay. So it's a national conference. It's, it's – well, it's a local it's, – it's the Melbourne one, and they do – I believe they also have one in Sydney. But, the, you know, people – you know, they make, they make a, you know – a weekend out and of it. They make Aliyah like to Melbourne. Yeah, they, they, yep. they make Aliyah to uh, Melbourne. And uh, so it's great. And and they have a wonderful, um, uh, for the most part, uh, wonderful uh, sessions with professionals that uh, teach, uh, that uh, help distribute information in new ways to teach uh, Jewish subjects mm-hmm. in Jewish, basically Jewish day schools. Uh, I say uh, for the most part simply because I've been a regular participant and I would hate to be accused of being an egomaniac <laughs> and and being a narcissist, but then we would be bleeding <laughs> us talking into the presidential <laughs> stuff in the States now, so we'll <laughs> forget about that for a second. By the way, you mentioned that, uh, and I'll just touch on something that I noted during the week, which has got nothing to do with ZFA and education is that I noticed that Trump's uh, when when he came to the uh, what was the big production he was talking at the it convention the, 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 Demo- the, the Republican, Republican the Repub- convention he was standing on stage it was black behind him except for all these lights and they didn't say Republicans and they didn't have the American flag they just had the words and lights at seven foot tall mm-hmm. Trump. And this is uh, th- this is a new first in egomania that I've seen. But anyway, we, I'm digressing. I will I'm say I will say I saw the best thing on Facebook. There are very few things that are really, really ingenious on Facebook. But I did see a <laughs> a post that had um, that said uh, the uh, Republicans just spent three days at their convention bashing someone who is not actually running in the <laughs> in the presidential race and under it it said well played Mr. Joe uh, so uh, it, it, that was very I good. actually thought that very was good. Yeah, that's a good thing. comment. Alright back to the conference. Back, back to the conference and by the way are, are you are you, con- are you 
chairing a session? Are you giving yes, a I presentation? Yes, I am. Okay. I, I, I Let's am, hear about I'm that. I'm doing a session because uh, it's all about me, 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 of course. me. Uh, the, the session I'm doing is, is a, uh, a session that's entitled uh, Neurodivergent as a Second Language. Mm-hmm. And basically what it is is I'm running a session on how educators can communicate with uh, the families and the homes of students that they have that are kids that are have either disabilities or that are on the spectrum. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot of, um, listen, uh, one of the things that is, is, is perhaps one of the biggest misconceptions even among professionals in any education thing is that they serve, they serve the, the student. And they're, 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 if they're good teachers, they're focusing on the student, the student, the student, the student, and they forget the fact that the student does not live in a void. Yeah. And they forget about the holistic view of taking into account uh, the student's home life and, and stuff like that. Mm. And one of the things that I'm going to be doing and trying to help these educators become more aware of is the uh, environmental impact of having any member with a disability or any member of a family that is on the spectrum. Mm-hmm. I'll give you an example, uh, a Please. real life example of, of what I'm going through this morning, as I've, I've mentioned already. Uh, if I feel a little fuzzy, it's just because your eyeglasses are not <laughs> focused right. If I feel a little fuzzy on the radio, um, I, it's because I've gotten very little sleep last night. The reason is is that uh, my son, who's uh, 15 years old and a teenager, uh, which is enough reason not to get any sleep whatsoever, Absolutely. is also epileptic and nonverbal. And he had a seizure yesterday. Right. So he was going through a lot of sleep type of stuff and, and waking up at 3 o'clock in the morning. And we did our best not to wake up other people in the household and stuff. But it does have a profound effect not only on him and on me, but on his two, his two sisters. Yeah. So this has an impact on whether, you know, organically, whether they've done homework, whether they're rusted, uh, rusted, they're rusted, yes, but <laughs> rested for class yeah. uh, the next day. And the ways that teachers can and educators can actually do uh, a better job of taking that into account. Now, that does not mean that, that they should be excused from tasks or anything like mm. that. But there are – but the expectations for all students, because all families have their different stuff going on, should be more fluid in how, how these, these teachers can communicate that with families mm-hmm. in a way that does not compromise the educational – the virtues of the education that they're supposed to be uh, yeah, giving it's, to the it's students. A di- it's a difficult balance because you've got a whole class of 20 balance. kids. Yeah, That in addition to that, that, that um, the context of what a lot of parents have if they've had kids that uh, are neurodivergent, uh, they've had – probably have had years of being told – by institutions about how high maintenance their children are right. in class, right, and about about this and that, and and about how when parents get to let's say year five, yep, uh, year five in a class, they've had four, five, maybe even six, seven years of schools looking like, and sometimes in fact trying to document why they should not have these kids in their school. Okay. Because they're too high maintenance. So we're looking at all the negative reasons. We're looking at all the negative right. things. And there's some things that can be done that are really, really simple. Yeah. Uh, they're, nothing's ever simple. <laughs> I mean, we're Jewish. Nothing is ever very simple. Absolutely. But there are things that are very straightforward. They are like in communications, whether it be oral or in writing, communication should always have the five to one ratio. Where we're doing five, we're saying five positive things as opposed as opposed to the one negative, so that there's an overriding sense of uh, overriding sense of where we can build from a positive foundation, so, and just just simple things like that. Given that your focus, your your, your particular daily focus, 
uh, is um, s- special skills. Right. Uh, how does that differ? Well, it differs. It differs in the sense that the that the um, the point of 